going back to the song, like Pop Your Shit, that is like my most prized possession song, like for me, just personally, because being that I was attached to other people with uh, the success that I've had before, whenever a lot of like <clears throat> went down, like drama and stuff like that, I had a lot of people telling me, you wouldn't be shit without da 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 da, or you wouldn't be doing this without da 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 da, like you done type. And so it was like, I took that, I went and recorded a song, and now that's all on y'all for you page. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did that shit by right. myself, you know? I know that feel good. It did. <laughs> it really did. Because it was like, y'all was talking all that shit. Now y'all using my song. What mm. the f***? Yo, this video is sponsored by Los Hermanos, and it's crazy because I always wanted to have a uh, tequila sponsorship. So shout out to my guys over at Los Hermanos for taking a shot with me, doing this partnership thing. I really appreciate it. Listen, I like it so much, I might just be worse than uh, Rick Ross, bro. So if you see me on the gram, posting it all over my story and my gram, don't say nothing. Just go ahead and buy a bottle. I got it by the case. So look, we got the Blanco. We also got the Repo. And you know, my favorite is in Yeho, right? We got it on the way, you know. Like I said, we got it by the case, man. So listen, if you in Delaware, you in Georgia, you in Maryland, you in New York, you in Jersey, make sure you go to the nearest liquor store and ask for some Los Hermanos. Hey, my guy. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J. Hill, J. Hill Podcast. We are in the building. Our special guest is here. When I say special, I mean, this person is really special. Um, gender fluid is my, probably my first time ever interviewing somebody like that or even having a conversation with somebody that's gender fluid. Am I saying it right, guys? Gender fluid? Yeah. Okay. We got next young, youngin' in the building. What up? How you feeling? I'm feeling good. How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. So first of all, like, I know gender fluid means you can go by whatever you want, right? Or no? It's really like you don't know. Uh... I'm undescribable. <laughs> 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 no, it's really like you don't identify as boy or girl why not it, though i don't know why other people do but like for me it's just i just sometimes feel like i want to dress like a boy and sometimes i want to dress like a girl it how just do you be, feel today i feel like a bad bitch today baddie that's the baddie right it's baddie today. <laughs> okay <laughs> okay wait so at one point in time you were like a stud mm -hmm. how long ago was this um, I ain't gonna lie. I haven't been a stud in probably like a year now. You said like that's a long time or something. I mean, it feels like it's been a long time. So do you deal with guys now? Yeah. So when you deal with guys and they like look back at you being a stud, does that creep them out? Or? <laughs> I wouldn't say it creep them out, but they be like, stop doing that shit. Don't do that shit. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. kind of like. They don't like that shit. Dealing with a girl that used to be like a dumb. <laughs> but they be like, at least you didn't look like. You still look like a girl. Yeah, like I could tell still, you was a girl. You, like a man. Huh? you probably look like a man. <laughs> like you probably look like a boy. Like, no. Like, what are you talking about? No. No, you can still tell I was a girl. So what type of stud were you then? You was like a feminine. So you was like a gay stud, kinda. Yeah, I was a stud, but there's a difference between a stud and a dyke. That's where people be getting confused. I was a stud. A dyke is usually super, super like masculine. You know, I thought like, y'all didn't even like that word. I'm confused. Come on, man. Give me. Get, <laughs> come on, man. Put me on. Game. I thought Dyke was like, you don't say that. Who told you that? I don't know. I, just, I assume. I assume. <laughs> you probably called somebody a Dyke that wasn't a Dyke. Okay. Yeah, they was probably a stud. All right. So finish explaining. So <clears throat> a Dyke is the boy, like Dom. That's so what we call just, it. Dom. <clears throat> yeah, they're super like masculine. Like they go all the way. You know what I'm saying? But a stud. We'll, we still have, like, our feminine ways. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can tell that we a girl and we, like, identify as a girl. Like, we know, we know we're a girl, but... A stud? Yeah. I thought a stud was just a girl that wanted to be a boy. They put the dildo on, the strap <laughs> on and stuff. I thought that's what the stud was. I mean, yeah, they do that, too. Look, that's just how I look at it. I don't know how other people might look at it, but that's how I identify as whenever I am in the stud. Uh, persona. But you, so you still tap into that now or? Lately, I really haven't, I guess, because I'm getting older. 
and okay. my body's changing. I'm female. You yeah, know? it's hard to hide uh, a lot. Yeah, I'm not got... trying to be no thick ass thud. <laughs> <laughs> you come out here with the hips. Like, I mean, it's a lot of niggas that got hips nowadays. I don't know what's going on. What's in the food, but I mean, <laughs> ass busted off the jeans, trying to sag and shit. Uh-uh. That shit crazy. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta pop out and show niggas for sure. <laughs> I'm just saying. Sometimes you gotta do that. <laughs> All right, so like, let's talk about this music, then, man. Like, um, how long you been doing it? How long you been? Um, I've been making music since 2019. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was working at this studio, and this producer he hit up the page because you know he wanted to tap in. Mm-hmm. And the first thing he said to me was, "You look like a rapper, bro." And I was like, "I ain't no fucking rapper. Like, mm. I've never done that before. I just like made beats and stuff." And so he was like, "Nah." Uh, take one of your beats, go home, write to it, come back, and let me see what you got. And so that's what I did, and we've been making music together ever since. And how long ago was that? 2019. Oh, that's that's not like yesterday. That's a, You've been doing this for a while now. Yeah. And then you had the one song that blew up on TikTok, right? Mm-hmm. But that wasn't your song. No, I was featured. How was that? What you mean? During that time, like, because that did like COVID, 2 million on YouTube. During COVID and stuff? Yeah. Um, did you get a lot of, like, recognition from that? Yeah. I did. I did have to fight for a lot of recognition, too. Wow. Like, I had to go to people and be like, hey, make sure you include me, too, because this is my song as well. You know, like, you know how that how I be going with certain songs. If a certain verse goes viral, they think that's just that person's song. So, like, yeah, I did have to fight for a lot of my recognition on a song, but it got to a point I didn't even really care. I just... Was like, I but got did the it bread. help with the music career, or oh, you got the bread? Mm-hmm. So you got streaming from it, like mm-hmm. yeah, I got paid. Yeah, I made money off of it. <laughs> so they, how how was that? How did that happen? What you mean? So you say you got paid because I'm thinking like you was featured, so I was thinking they would pay you as a feature. No, because um, I had a relationship with the people that we made the music with, so we were all friends. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So. We didn't really have no paperwork. We just kind of did it for fun. And then we was like, we're going to bust that hole down the middle. You know, right. like, yeah. But I'm pretty sure it's still making money, though, right? Or, yeah. So mm-hmm. you still get paid? Yeah. Oh, so it's like percentages on the back end. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, that's smart. Talk about that for a second. <laughs> so you having that success, mm-hmm. doing a percentage thing, when do you say, I want to charge for a feature? Or do you always keep it at, I'd rather just go in on the back end? Um, I guess it would depend on... The artists, like, and what they're doing. Because, like, me, if I like you, your music and I fuck with you and I think you're cool, I'll just, like, fuck with you and be like, just get me on the back end. But it's like, if I ain't really, like, you know, and I don't really feel like you taking your uh, craft serious, I'm going to wax your ass. I'm going to be like, well, all right. Who was, so, again, I'm probably a little older. I feel like I'm probably, like, 10 years older than you. But, so, the, who was that artist that you did the song with? PP Cocaine. You looked at me like I should know that. <laughs> I should know that? No, I guess... No, no, no. I guess going. not. <laughs> it would have been way funny if you said, yeah, but whatever. So, no, who is that? For real. Just somebody that I made music with. It's somebody, clearly. Yeah. Let me see. If you want to know... I you, if you want to know what's going on, just go stream no, no. Daddy to Batty. I'm about to go look at it. Go. I'm a, we're going to get the Daddy to Batty, <laughs> but I'm, play, I'm curious. Go play that first song. Or the second song, one of them. No, Pop your shit twin. Go play that and you're going you gonna to find out everything. Talk about it. Uh-uh. Nah, you ain't we about ain't to come to an interview it. and not talk. <laughs> What's going on? What? See, you just because, gave it like, up. I've, I was just like, well, I mean, it was kind of hard to like not talk about her if you brought up the viral song. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I've grown from it and I've grown past it. So, it's kind of like digging back. It's kind of like stuff. taking off a scab of a wound. So it's like, I ain't even trying to like go back into that. It's like I understand, but now I'm curious. Is there <laughs> any way you can have a conversation without bringing up like, because I'm, I'm, I'm super respectful when it comes to conversations, but is there any way you can have the conversation without going too deep into it and opening like old wounds? Because I don't want to do nothing that's going to make you feel uncomfortable. No, I'd rather not. You'd rather not? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Damn, because I'm like, who is this person now? See, I'm, I got intuitive thoughts. So I'm like, but whatever. Fuck it. So yeah. was that person a big artist then? Um, They were an upcoming artist. So the song just went viral? Mm-hmm. Okay. It went viral unreleased. It was just a snippet on TikTok. Yeah. So I'm assuming that had to like change your thought process of TikTok at that moment. Like you probably thought TikTok was the wave. 
I I didn't know what I thought because I wasn't really a big social media person at the time. Like it was, I guess I didn't really realize the success of the song until like later. Like it didn't really hit me. I was just like, oh, okay, that's cool. Got a million views. That's cool. You know, like it would just. I Bro, I looked like, up that video. That shit say <laughs> ten million views on YouTube. Are you serious? <laughs> I mean, it's gold now, so. That's crazy. But it's like that happened like two years ago. So it's kind of like old to me, you know, like I need another hit. You fu- you feel me? I need another one. <laughs> I mean, I feel you, but I don't think my whole YouTube. Well, I got I probably got 10 million, but st- now nah, I'm probably creeping up on 10. I don't know. 10 million is a big deal. That's what I'm like. And you just like, mm, I said ain't nothing. I just got to I got to do another one. <laughs> Does that. So it's funny because I was talking to an artist named Duke Deuce and um, he had a song called Crunk Ain't Dead. And he said he, he almost fell into a state of depression trying to, like, chase that last high. And I'm wondering, from you having, like, a viral song like that, do you feel the same way? Like, do you feel like you're chasing the next big hit? I mean, in a way, yeah, but I'm not finna stress myself about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going to go with the flow and just hope that it just happens organically like it did before. Mm. You know, it seems like in life, whenever you try and you keep trying too hard that's whenever it gets harder but if you just like chill out just vibe and just keep doing the work it'll just it'll just follow through Mm. what's the what's i guess what was the biggest lesson that you've learned since you started rapping and making music um i would say uh keeping my boundaries for Mm. sure um like what how does that look in the music industry (laughs) <laughs> sometimes people in the industry make it hard to work with them because they can't control themselves keep going like what <laughs> like for an example like some of the males in the industry they just they be horny yeah they be horny they be some freaky, fuck. Ass, freaky like, ass niggas calm down sir he a fan he a fan he a fan no for real <laughs> but I be just trying to keep it strictly business and they just be like Come on, like, I'm you should, like, uh, you should just tell him I'm a him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't gonna lie. One time I um I was uh trying to tap in with this producer one time. I ain't gonna say who it is, but I was trying to tap in with this producer and he was trying to flirt with me and stuff, and so I was like, I'm finna pull up to the uh, studio as Daddy Kane, keep playing with me. <laughs> <'Cause he ain't> <laughs> <laughs> with the jeans and I the hat, like, the fitted. I'm finna pull up as Daddy Kane, so you leave me alone so we can get to this money. Let's get this business. Yeah, if you tell if you tell a producer or a rapper that you go by him and he still wanna fuck, I mean, what, isn't, that, isn't that technically, he's, st- he's technically gay, right? I mean, you're still a girl. <laughs> I don't know. If a girl be like, nah, I'm a him, and you still pursue it, it's like... I can't trust you. I mean, I don't judge, bro. I mean, they gonna do what they wanna do, but at the end of the day, she's still a girl. Like, she still got a pussy. I guess. I just don't wanna be with nobody that refers themselves as like him. You said you don't want to? Nah. I mean, that's okay. That's your opinion. You okay with a guy that's okay with that? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I ain't never been, I don't, because I, mean, I don't call fluid. myself a him, though. You call yourself they. Yeah, she, they. She, they. Mm-hmm. Why they, though? They, because I didn't want to be called he, you know? Because, like, whenever... <laughs> because I was like, uh-uh, y'all calling me a he and boy, okay, it's going to be they. If you if you want to call me something else other than she, then call me they. Bro, they should have never created this pronoun <laughs> shit, man, because y'all just make up whatever y'all want. You know what? I want to be called it, or I want to be called thing. Like, bro, how long have you been doing this? Um... I don't know, for a while. Is it legal or is this this is just what you you just came out like this is what I wanna be? <laughs> I just came out and that's why I was I was like, this is what I wanna be. That's what it is. I respect that. I ain't mad at that. So the daddy to baddie thing. Mm-hmm. This is like your coming out party essentially. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like you so now you are no no longer gender fluid. I mean, I still am. I still have my urges where I be wanting to switch, like, but I choose not to because... What do you say urge? Like, what? Like, it's literally just be a feeling. Like, sometimes I just be like, I just want to relax. I just want to take my hair out. I want to take my nails off. I want to sag my pants. I just want to be real laid back. Because I grew up a tomboy. Mm -hmm. Like, I've always been tomboyish. So sometimes I just feel like that's what the vibe is. But girls do that. It's nothing wrong with it. Like, you could could be a girl and still just dress down. 
Right. Yeah. But then you still are they at that moment. Mm hmm Because that's what I'm feeling like. They. <laughs> if, you, if you like it, I love it. Okay. So, but we can say like what? 80% is baddie now. Yeah. Right now. Mm-hmm. And that's what influenced the project. So talk, 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 talk to us about this project. So baddie to baddie. So basically, this is me putting out music under the persona of Baddie Kane, where as before, you got the persona of Daddy Kane. So it was like my Daddy Kane music was more masculine, talking about bad bitches, more more so from like a male perspective, but uh, gay girls like. So was you actually living the stuff you was rapping about? Yeah. Okay. I'm just mm -hmm. curious. Yeah, I had I was fucking with girls and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't I was strapping that, them hoes, y'all. What? The <laughs> <f> <laughs> so eighty percent now you're not you're not fucking with the hoes now. No, it's 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 weird though, cause like whenever I'm in my stud persona, I fuck with girls, and whenever I'm with my baddie. I fuck with niggas. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be a nigga that's... You going, do you got a boyfriend? No. I'm pretty sure your man going to be like, yo, we should, you know what I'm saying? Like, holla at some girls. Would you do it then? Is that they or is that just a woman being sexually... You got to understand that the daddy and baddy are two completely different people. You feel me? Like, we're the same person, but we have two different type of personalities. Daddy will be down for the threesomes and all of that. But baddy, selfish. I'm not sharing a dick. No. No. <laughs> that shit dead. Okay. All right. So back to the the um <laughs> back to the uh is it bad that like I'm just not you, like I'm not judging you. I'm just judging the whole like the fact that this can be a thing. I mean, I don't take offense to it. A lot of people be sensitive to the shit, but it's like I don't really care what people say. Like, why I don't can't care. I guess me? I'm judging it because, like, why can't we just be us in whatever you feel like doing? You feel like doing? Why we gotta put a name to it? That's what's confusing for me. I mean, I agree with you to a certain extent, but because it is out there and I am a part of the LGBTQ community, I had to adapt to that. You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of like I never put a label on what I was doing. I just knew that. Sometimes I wanted to be a tomboy. Sometimes I wanted to be girly girl. Mm. I never put a label to it until, like, I started getting a lot of popularity and then, like, accidentally misgendering people and then, like, stuff like that. It's okay, like, oh, okay. so this is what this is. So I did my research. I'm like, oh, so I'm considered gender fluid or, oh, I'm considered a STEM or, oh, I'm this or I'm that. Because, like, I said that I was a STEM and they, like, was like, wait, That's, wait, hold on. You're you, not a STEM. What's a STEM? At first, we said <laughs> stud, dyke. Now it's a STEM. Like, come on, God damn. A stud and a femme c c uh, c combined. Oh, my God. But the brat, okay. But I would say that I was a STEM, right? But people would be like, you're bisexual. STEMs are lesbians, you know, so you can't say that you're a STEM, you know, like, it'd be, it'd be a lot, brother. <laughs> I love my people, but it'd be a lot. It's too much. What's the uh, the correct um, is it an acronym for the what, the entire one? You know it. What you mean? LGBTQ. Wait, LGBTQ plus. What? What's the rest? You know the rest? No. Can I feel like they should ban you from the community if you don't know all the words? How they gonna do that? <laughs> How they gonna do that? They gonna be strong. <laughs> It'd be too much. All I need to worry about is the B, the letter B, because that's me. Bye. Okay. <laughs> I feel like they should definitely like they should start banning. They they should start giving y'all tests. If you don't get the answer right, you ain't in the in, in the organization. I feel like when it comes to I feel like a lot clearly today, but when it comes to uh the LGBT community, I feel like it's a few people in this world you can't talk about. It's Jewish people and LGBT. Well, Jewish people, woman, LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. Like, you say anything about, not even religion no more. Like, people don't give a damn about religion. You believe in, fuck that. <laughs> like, they be like, that's how they be like, they be, going, they be going crazy. You could talk about whoever, this person ain't shit, that person ain't shit. But the moment you say something about an LGBTQ, a mm -hmm. woman, and a Jewish person, shit canceled. It's, it's a wrap. Yeah, they be ready to go.
They, oh. they be they be on it. Back to uh, let's get back on point. Daddy to baddie, inspiration behind it. Just me myself, like me just living that. Hmm. Because you said I'm coming to eighty percent baddie right now. Mm-hmm. So we transitioning from stud stem they. <laughs> yeah. It's a bad bitch eating rice, rice and cabbage. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. How do you feel about this project? How do you feel like your people are going to take to it? Um, well, it's already like, out now. Yeah, it's already yeah, how, out. How do you feel like your people are taking to it now? Um, from what I've been seeing, they've been enjoying it. You know, it's they're getting a different side, a different vibe. So I'm not doing so much rappy, which I would as a Daddy Kane. It's more like melodic and. There's some R and B. There's some um, Afro beat on there. There's uh, there's two rappy songs and there's Jersey pop. Mm. So I kind of branched out into different genres. What made so. you uh, do the Jersey thing? Um, really, it wasn't even my idea. It was my producer's idea. Um, it was just this loop that I had, and I just recorded over just the loop. And so he took my uh, vocals and the loop. And then he put drums around it, which mm. made it into like a Jersey B type. So, okay. yeah. You know, that's a whole, that's a big thing now. Like, mm-hmm. don't be upset if people come to you saying that you like stealing that swag or something. Bro, <laughs> cry me a river, bro. I feel like the, the, the music industry is getting super like, well, not getting, it's been super sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. And on the internet, everybody's so sensitive, bro. Like, I mean, it's annoying. What are you, so you not you don't think you're sensitive? Because if somebody stole your music, right? Mm-hmm. They stole your whole swag, right? Let's say somebody out there calling themselves, I don't know, Mr. and Mrs. Kane. I oh, don't know. hell no. Nah. Right? You That's gonna, too close. <laughs> you're going to be like, what the fuck? They're going to be like, she never said, you was never a him, right? So I'm Mr. and Mrs. Like, you're going to be yeah. like, that's clearly my shit. I ain't going to lie. I thought people was uh, copying me, but I realized they probably was already doing the same shit. They just, um, I just hadn't found them yet. Because Pop Your Shit Twin, which is a song on the project, that went viral on um, TikTok. And in my video, I did the trend. I started the trend. But uh, I had my pictures alternating from Batty to Daddy with the song, you oh, know, word. with the lyrics. Yeah. And so it was a trend. So everybody that was like stems and like gender fluid people, they were all doing it. So then that's when I was like, oh, my God, there's so many of me. Mm. Like, I didn't realize there were so many people that did this. But that's a trend, though. I mean, that's like the, I guess, what is it called? The, the, yeah, like the trend on on social media. But did you see anybody doing it, like, for real? Like, a real Yeah, thing? I've seen some, like, looking at some of the videos, and I would actually go to their page. Some of them were, like, actually, like, you could see, like, on my Instagram, at the bottom, you can see I'm Daddy Kane, then I'm Batty Kane, then I'm Daddy Kane, then I'm Batty Kane, like, alternating. Why did that so. name come from? Because it sounds like Danity Kane, but I feel like you don't, you probably. No, really, um. You know who Danity Kane is? Yeah, I know who Big Daddy Kane is. No, not Big Daddy Kane. Who? Danity Kane. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm not about to argue with you about that. Oh. It ain't, I, it's. I, don't, I ain't even gonna lie, I can't even remember where. The daddy came. Oh, um, my producer, he was like, my producer, Spain, he's also my best friend. So mm-hmm. that's why you hear me talk about him a lot. But uh, he was like, when I was doing my daddy Kane shit, I was always, I always attracted females. Like, I was getting the hoes, for real. So it, that came from Big Daddy Kane then? Yeah. So like, he made a joke and was like, you um, remind me of Big Daddy Kane. Mm. And so in Three Musketeers, I said, is Daddy Kane in this bitch? But I said it as a joke. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, my followers started calling me Daddy Kane instead of Next Youngin, mm. when Next Youngin is my artist name. Right. But majority of people call me Batty Kane or Daddy Kane, Kane or Batty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I like... So it's, it's kind of like you gender fluid all the way around, like, with the, your music career and in mm-hmm. real life, because now you got, like, Daddy Kane or Batty Kane mm-hmm. or even Next Youngin. So you could kind of be like, I don't know, like, is it, like, some type of tribe? Thing or something going like, or is it just bi? No, it's bi. No, I'm saying like you know, in the LGBTQ community, I'm just I don't know. Like you got people that go both ways, but is it something that way you can go like 
Three ways? What is three ways? I don't know. Let's talk around <laughs> like animals. Like, what, what, what do they call people that like men, women, and animals? Like, <laughs> I don't know about all that. <laughs> I don't know. Like, shit. Like, it could be something like that. Because you got three names. That's why I said that. I'm like, that would be cool. Because Daddy Kane and Batty Kane makes Next Youngin. Like, that's Next Youngin. You know, it's just two alter egos. It's, that's all it is. Mm. I mean, that's kind of cool, though. I like it. How, how are your peers? How do your peers take to it? Um... My my friends and stuff, they don't really... No, like, music industry. Like, how did... Oh. <laughs> Whenever yeah, I first started... was like, <laughs> these bitches. <laughs> Go ahead. No, when I, do, when I was doing the Daddy Kane, I can say that a lot of the industry people kind of, like, side-eyed me, you know? They weren't really, like, mm, type. But those same people that I reached out to when I was Daddy Kane that kind of gave me the side-eye was the first ones to hop into my DMs Whenever I was doing the Batty Kane, you know what I'm saying? Once I switched, they was like, hello. Oh, <laughs> they said, hello. <laughs> Let me see something real quick, man. They said, why you ain't been doing that? You need to stop doing that daddy shit. So maybe that can be the play to, uh, clearly if, if everybody wants you, like shit, you might as well have to be, you might as well be Batty Kane more often. Yeah, but it ain't about what everybody else wants. It's about what I want. That's real. Do you sometimes get conflicted when so many people around you are asking for one thing, but you don't want that? Um, yeah. Yeah. Because, um, believe it or not, I've had people tell me, like, they don't want me to come hang out with them if I'm dressing as Daddy Kane. For real? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'd be like, don't come over here as Daddy Kane. Like, don't, don't even come over here with that. People are so shallow. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I'm grab my bag and I left. Like, I won't be back. <laughs> mm. But when you sit down and think about it, th those things like bother you? Not really, not really. I've like really grown a lot mentally, and like how I look at myself, I've become very confident. So it's like I don't really trip too much about what other people got to say. Mm. What about how did your parents take it? <laughs> my parents didn't really like it. Well, let me be correct. My mom, them, didn't really like him. My dad, he didn't care. But on my mom's side, I grew up in a Christian home. So, like, we were Pentecostal and, you know, Sheesh. yeah. So I'm like the outcast, you know, gay, rapper, you know, so. Did they kick you out or? No, I had already moved out. What? Because what I was in, um, I went to Clark, Atlanta. Right. So after I graduated, I went to Clark. And I stayed on campus. I dropped out of school, and then I left and went to Cali. Damn. Yeah. So you know they was over there running around with their heads flying off. And then <laughs> like, you what's got going on? the success came, and then did they? They didn't give a fuck about that shit at first. I think really because they ain't understand it, because they don't they don't really know, you know. So I had to break it down to them and be like, "Look, I'm da 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 da," and they was just like. And I was like, look, here, here goes some money. Like, let me show you. This is this is what this is doing. And they be, then they was kind of like, oh, okay, but they still don't really, they ain't really care. Mm. How was your relationship with them now? Um, it's good. It's gotten a lot better. Cause also they didn't like the Daddy Kane shit. Like they did not like that. Like you dressing up or just the name or everything about it? Like everything about it, period. But were they okay with you being just bisexual, maybe? Like, cause I'm No, because they're Christians. Right. No, that's what I'm asking. Uh -uh. I'm, I'm just curious. Cause some parents have to like you could be something, right? Mm -hmm. But when it you could judge something all you want. But the moment they land on your doorsteps, it's different. Right? That's what that's how I'm looking at it. So like, yeah, they might accept it, but they might have constraints with it. Like, okay, I understand she's bisexual, but you could be bisexual as long as you don't do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, no. They was on some mind. I can't wait to have my daughter back. You know, mm. type like. Uh, they How did that like, make you feel in those moments? It hurt my feelings for sure, especially coming from like home. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But I ended up just ignoring it, and I kind of clouded my mind with the success that I was having at the time. Cause like it's crazy, they didn't even know what my sexuality was until I started getting clout. Like they kind of found out with everybody else. Okay. Like with the world, basically. Mm. So. That's it, probably. They was, for a whole loop. Like, what the? They were probably like, what? No, nah, facts. <laughs> Yo, is your favorite artist is Michael Jackson or something like that? Was like your influence? Uh, I like Michael Jackson and I like um Justin Bieber. So, so with that in mind, just curious. Mm -hmm. 
if you don't say those two, who would your top five artists of all time be? I they can't say be... either one? Nah. Uh, okay. <sighs> or matter of fact, not even, not, I'm not going to say all time, sorry. Top five, like, right now. Right now? That's what I meant to ask, yeah. Um, <laughs> Damn. Flo Millie. I love Flo Millie. Okay. Sexy Red, because she fun. I just love her. She got a good personality. She's just fun. Um, Lil Baby. Um, trying to think, who am I listening to right now? Dang, I can't think. Because I'm, I'm very versatile with what I listen to. I listen to so much music. Like, there's not one artist that I just... Keep on repeat. It's always multiple. Now, I ask that because, like, if your inspiration is, like, Michael Jackson, I wonder how does that affect the music now? What you mean? Like, what you listen to, how you produce the music, or how you make your music? Um, no, not really, like... Or is that just somebody you like? It was just somebody that I liked. And, like, watching him and Justin Bieber, because growing up in a Christian home, I wasn't allowed to listen to anything that had cuss words in it. Secular music. Right? Um, he wasn't... Uh, yeah, okay. none of that. It had to be clean. Mm -hmm. So, Justin Bieber and Michael Jackson, they both had clean music. So, like, when I was younger, I would watch their music videos. I'd be, like, dancing to it. And it was like, I knew that I wanted to make music videos and be in the music videos, but I didn't understand, like, you can, you got to be an artist. You got to make music. You got to record. You got to do this. So, it was just really, like, I just liked what they did, and it made me want to do it. Mm. So, wait, but don't... Justin Bieber, he, he used to dance. Oh, no. Yeah, he used to he dance, did. right? Yeah. Michael Jackson dance? Mm -hmm. Do you dance? Yeah, sometimes, but I haven't as much lately, but yeah. I'm just trying to pick your brain because, like, if those are your, like, influences, but where is where is the influence? Like, where where is, I guess, their music and your music? Um, I don't know. Maybe more so, like, the beats, how mm. the beat, what the beats are. Like, my beat choices is kind of, like, similar to what they will have or kind of stem from something that they will have. Like, I just like poppy stuff. Like, that's what they have and, like, melodic and drums yeah. and stuff like that. It's crazy. Because I was in the band, too, so what, I can hear music differently. What band? Um, what type of band? Marching band. Like, college or, like, high school? High school and school. college. But, you know, college, so college marching band is kind of different from, like, recreational marching band. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, um, I went to Clark Atlanta University. I got a scholarship, a band scholarship there, and what? I, um, yeah, and I was in the marching band. So you was good because they don't like they don't have a lot of. I know band is big at HBCUs, but they don't have. They give out a lot of scholarships for band. Um, I don't really know. A lot of people that I knew in the band had a scholarship, but I don't really know. I wasn't. In... What did you do in the band? I play, I was in drumline. What did you play? Uh, I played tenor. Sometimes I play snare. Sometimes I play quince. Like, I just bounced around. You play snare? Mm hmm You wasn't nice. Yeah, I was. Wasn't nice. <laughs> Bro, yeah. the snare is probably one of the... I think the snare is probably one of the hardest things to play. Because, like, hand-eye coordination, it'd mm -hmm. be crazy. See, I used to play the bass. So I was in a band, too. That big-ass shit. Mm. That shit. Boy, that shit was hard. <laughs> See? That shit ain't make your back hurt. That shit was fire. I don't know. It was a little strong, little nigga. One. See, I played in the recreation band. I never played in, like... Like high school or college, like mm. I played before, like yeah, I used to play the drums and I used to always want to play the um, we had like the quads. I forgot, I don't know the real name. Quince. That might be it. The mm -hmm. little four things. Mm -hmm. That shit was so. It was hard. five of them. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay, five. Quince. I guess that's okay. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know, but yeah, I wanted to play that. But it was also a quad too, like with four of them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, man, I could never play none of that shit. Yeah. Do you incorpor incorporate that a lot in your music? Like band instruments? Like, because we see a lot of that now in in artists incorporating, like we seen Beyonce do it. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody just did it recently. Uh, I forgot, but incorporating like band music in, inside their music. Um, In a way, yeah, because my producer, he was in the band too, you know? So like... Oh, y'all just a whole little band, little <laughs> rapper <laughs> Yeah, we got a lot of similarities, so... We be bouncing ideas off of each other. So mm. Okay. So what you got coming up next, man? Like what, what's the plan? Shit. 
y'all go stream this EP. That's that's what you need to do. Just worry about that. Daddy the baddie. <laughs> Daddy the baddie. Mm-hmm. Why should they stream it though? I'm just curious. Because outside of your feel, fans, because you're gonna feel a different type of vibe that you haven't felt before. Because like, do y'all know anybody that's gender fluid? Some they do. I don't. Y'all sure do. I'm saying the people that's watching. Oh, probably, I was like, I thought you. Talking about oh no, nah, they probably do. I'm ignorant. You can't ask me. That's I'm the worst person to ask anything. <laughs> you know somebody gender fluid? See, you do. That's what's up. Yeah. But I'm saying why though? Like the music, I man, it's cool. But I want to know why. Like why should they listen to it? Like tell me because clearly you you pointed out a specific song. We don't gotta go into the, the details again. But it's a it's a purpose behind it. You feel mm -hmm. me? And if you can explain that to the audience, what is it? That, um, what does it mean to you? Like, what is this project? That, that the whole project, or are you yeah. talking about the song no, specifically? This, no, just the, the project. Um, just really me um going into my own individuality, mm. you know, and being able to uh, express myself more in a better way, instead of just making all like shake ass type music. I'm a little bit more serious. I like talk about some uh events that's happened in my life. Stuff like that. Why now, though? Why you decided to do that now? Just wanting to do something different, really, because majority of the music is the same, just shaking the ass, this, is and that. But I don't know. I kind of wanted to give my followers more uh, a personal experience where they can feel a little bit connected to me, where um, they might be going some of this, through the same things that I'm going through. But why, though? I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm, I'm just trying to go deeper. So you say you tapping into your individuality, right? Mm-hmm. But why now? Like, do you feel like you wasn't an uh, individual at a, at a certain time in your career and in your life? Forget your career, but like just in your life? Yeah, and especially in my career because I came up with people, you know? So it was kind of like hard having your own individuality because you're always attached to somebody else, mm. you know? So it's like me detaching and it's like, okay, this is me. Like, I'm not just that person that was around this person or that did work or did a song with this person. Like, I'm my own person. Mm. How did that make you as an artist in your career? If you could think on it, like, did you want, because I'm thinking, like, that got to change the way you move, the way you interact with people. Like, mm -hmm. you wanting to be an individual, you always hearing your name attached to somebody else. How did that, in return, make you treat other people? If you could think about it. Um, I could say that it made me more uh, conscious of how I uh, treated other people. Because, like, sometimes... You don't realize something until it's done to you, mm -hmm. you know? So it really opened my eyes to be like, okay, I got to look at things outside of the box and put myself in other people's shoes to see how, you know, they would feel if that happened to them. Because mm -hmm. this happened to me, so. Because it almost feel like talking to you, like just we talking for a little while, it almost feel like you felt like you had to fight to be an individual. Yeah, I did. I really did. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's, um... A unique perspective because I don't know if I like in a world full of selfish people, everybody think they somebody. Mm -hmm. But then you talk to somebody and they're trying to, I don't want to say fine, but almost it feels like you're trying to show people that you are somebody. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So like going back to the song, like pop your shit, that is like my most prized possession song. Like for me just personally, because being that I was attached to other people with uh, the success that I've had before, whenever a lot of, like, <clears throat> shit went down, like drama and stuff like that, I had a lot of people telling me, you wouldn't be shit without da-da-da-da, or you wouldn't be doing this without da-da-da-da, like, you done type. And so it was like, I took that, I went and recorded a song, and now that shit all on y'all for you page. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did that shit by right. myself. You know, I know that feel good. It did. I, um, <laughs> it really did. Cause it was like y'all was talking all that shit. Now y'all using my song. What mm, the fuck? <laughs> nah, facts. You know it's funny. I uh, I was working for a company. And I'm gonna stop talking about this shit. But I talk about this shit all the time. And I'll never forget. I, like I got, I started doing, I started getting recognition from like this freestyle series I did back in Baltimore, and um, it was at a company. And I'll never forget. The company was like, yeah, man. Only the only reason why they uh. They like the freestyles is because of the background, because the background had their name like big, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's a big company. <clears throat> and I never forget. I'm like, ah, that's crazy. So 
one of my first freestyles I did by myself, like independent without the company, did like two million views. Mm. And that shit felt amazing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it was moments I had that high, but it's also so many moments where you don't have that high. Mm -hmm. And I almost kind of felt victim of like, man, maybe it's true. Yeah. Have you ever mm -hmm. felt that? Yeah, I have. I have. But I just keep going back to that. I'd be mm -hmm. like, but I did this. So, like, I know I can do it again. If I just apply myself, because mm -hmm. I'm the only person that's holding myself back. I can't blame nobody. I got to take accountability for that. That's they a ain't fact. got nothing to do with nobody. So. Mm -hmm. How do you move differently in this in this stage of your career, though? Um, Like I said, really just um, understanding myself, uh, my self-respect, my boundaries, because that's that all plays a part in, like, how you move. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, if you allowing people to just talk to you any type of way, treat you any type of way, like, so the you, results don't really be all that. But it's hard to see you doing that. You was you were doing that prior, I guess? No, I didn't. Ha I was a pushover. Like, a big pushover. Like, I can tell you about this one time. I was in this interview with somebody, and the whole time, the interviewer said nothing to me but talked about my song and their song that mm. I had with somebody. But they didn't say anything to me. They didn't address me. They didn't say, oh, this is Next Youngin. Like, nothing. like that shit hurt my feelings. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, right then, what I should have did, I should have got up and left. You know mm. what I'm saying? But I just sat there looking stupid, you know? So, mm. or just spoke up and like, hey, I'm Next Youngin. Like, you know? Now I'm looking at you. Mm. I'm glad I did this interview with you. Thanks. I'm, you, I'm you, here. I feel like um, I don't know. I think uh, you keep working. You know how I go. Like I feel like uh, I'm rooting for everybody. Everybody that's black one, and everybody that's an underdog. Mm -hmm. So like I feel like your story definitely gives underdog, and like you never know. Them people gonna be reaching back to you like, yo, can they get a feature? Mm-hmm. And then ain't nothing wrong with being an underdog though. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with being an underdog. I was underdog. Mm -hmm. I'm an underdog. Shit. Yeah, but I'm comfortable with like my little niche fan, fan base. You know, like I'll be chilling. How many? Um, can you talk? Do y'all like do artists talk about their? I feel like I could look at look it up. How many streamers you got on um Spotify? A monthly streamers you get? Um, the <clears> last <throat> time I checked, it was like four hundred thousand or three hundred monthly 000. streamers. Mm -hmm. No way. Yeah, hold on. I'm gonna go to Spotify right now. You talking about some underdog? I ain't underdog <laughs> shit. Go to Spotify right now. Somebody got a Spotify? Let me see. You do? Yeah, three hundred fifty-one k. Three hundred fifty-one k. You ain't no goddamn underdog. Fuck out of here. Wrap this interview <laughs> up. She full of shit. What? <laughs> Nigga, that's a big deal. I mean, yeah, but it's like I want to go further. Of course. <laughs> but I'm not you, satisfied. Do you not know that you're like, do you not see that you're a big deal or? No. And it's crazy because a lot of my peers, like my friends, they be like, you don't realize what you have. But it's like, I'm just so used to it. Like, I, okay, next. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm ready to go bigger. Like, mm. I feel like I'm still like in the beginning. That's true. Mm -hmm. But... You're still, you're beginning compared to where you started. Come on now. Yeah, I feel like I had an easy route because I started making music in 2019. Six months later, my song went, went viral. It only took six months. Mm. But now, seeing that viral song, right? Just curious. We about mm -hmm. to wrap up, but curious. Would you rather the song go viral? Like, did you like that? What came from it? Or have just a lot of songs doing pretty good? Um, I would rather have a lot of songs doing good, but the thing is, with that song, that was the very first song that got put out with my name. Okay. So it was like the very first song that I put out went gold. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was just like, it's bragging rights. Yeah. You, know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? But um, of course, I would want to have multiple songs going viral or like doing really well yeah. instead of just one big song. I only ask that because like I be having like a lot of clips go viral and that should be cool but it's like people only come for that type of content I make mm -hmm. 
different type of content. You get what I'm saying? Then they come, they don't, they follow you, but they don't, they're not engaging. So you fucking up my engagement. It's like yeah. I'd rather just have like twenty thousand followers, but like really high engagement. It's like mm-hmm. I don't need seventy hundred thousand. Like you know what I'm saying, I, I mean, I like, I want it for sure, but it's just now that I think about it, if I'm being like um, intentional about it, um, the viral content, I just feel like sometimes it hurt more than it helped. Yeah, I feel like if you just get one huge video that just go viral, it's it's kind of the same as like a one hit wonder. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, you want consistency. Yeah. Do you hear again? Because like that wasn't my time, or like I I probably wasn't listening to this type of music, but it still was a big deal. Ten million views on YouTube is crazy. Do you get people or whispers? Do you see people saying like you fell off or something like that? Or yeah, what? You, all the time. That's hilarious, yeah. bro. <laughs> Yeah, all the time. I'll be like, okay. <laughs> but do you know how look look how cool life is though? <clears throat> you said people say you fell off. I've never heard of that song ever. And it got 10 million views on YouTube. I don't even know what I don't know who the artist was. I ain't you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But look, look, like it's funny that like people could say you fell off, and it's like it's it's a group of people or so many more people who don't even know you started yet. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. dope as hell. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't have probably heard it because it's LGBTQ. Your algorithm wasn't going to show you that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you you probably wouldn't even came across it. But also, y'all are, like, mad younger than me. How old are you? I'm 33. You ain't that much older. I'm 25. It's almost 10 years, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I had this conversation with uh, Zanique and Beja, OMG girls. Mm. I wasn't listening to that shit. Yeah. And, I, and they we probably closer to age. It's just certain things, like you said, I guess, it was LGBTQ shit. I'm not. Mm-hmm. And algorithm plays a part in everything that you see. But also, men, only woman I'm really listening to right now is Sexy Red. <laughs> Period. You feel me? Like, <laughs> check that. Check that She's one. so fun. <laughs> I'm listening to that shit. She crank. Her, a lot of crank too. But mm-hmm. I, I'm not. But even still, it's funny because I don't think I'm getting in the car and like, yo, turn that lotto on. Yo, turn that sexy. I ain't, I ain't doing that. Now, in the club, Cardi B too. Cardi B go crazy. You like Cardi B? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You like Nicki Minaj? Yeah. Yeah, I feel I hate when people try to like say you can't you can't like one without the other or some shit like Bro, that. Bro, they beef ain't got nothing to do with me. Ain't got shit in their family. Like, <laughs> don't care. Like, no cap. <laughs> nah, this is good though, man. I feel like uh I want you to drop something that get 20 million. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's coming. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Uh for the people that don't know, what you about to say something? Mm. For the people that don't know, let them know how to follow you, how to get daddy to baddie, all that. Okay, um, Follow my Instagram. It's Next Youngin. Everything is really Next Youngin. But if you search up Baddie Kane, Baddie Kane, it's going to pop up. You're you going to find it. So just stick to those three names. You're going to find what you're looking for. <laughs> stick to those three names. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yo, nah, this is good, man. Uh, I wish you nothing but success for show. And if you ever need some support, you can hit me up, man. Hey, thank you. Um, but why we ain't taking no shot? You want to take a shot? Yeah. Okay. Yo, uh, Mason, can you grab us two glasses up there if you don't mind? I'm sorry. Man, she said, Damn. why wait? She, she probably was looking at it the whole Bro, time. Bro, like, I was eyeballing it. That's, that's, that's a part of, <laughs> hey, that's, that's, that's a part of you, you coming into your, um, this next level of your, uh, career, them boundaries. She like, nigga, <laughs> like, it's right there. Like, what we doing? Like, we ain't about to wrap the interview up like that. Come on. All right, we're going to take a shot. You're going to tell me, you're going to give me your honest opinion, how you feel about it, all right? Okay. And you already told me you're 25. I thought you was probably like. 18 or something, so you can take a shot. 18? Hey, listen, man. Y'all kids develop uh, super fast nowadays, super early nowadays, so. Yeah. Hey, I don't even play like that. Uh, You want to take it on, on, on camera, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Right. I'll take it on camera. I hope you got us some nice glasses. You smart, too. You was able to find them. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right. Um, Where I'm from, you got to uh pour your own. Oh. Yeah. I know we in the South and everybody always be like, from? I'm from Baltimore. Oh, okay. You pour your, pour your own poison, man. You get yourself drunk. You feel me? Like, that's how we do it. Type shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. So, we're going to take a toast. You're going to tell me what you think about it. You're going to give me your honest opinion, all right? Okay. Los Hermanos, shout out to my black brother, black-owned business, black-owned tequila. Thank you for the product. Thank you for the sponsorship. Make sure you check them out. Five different states. Uh, Georgia. New Jersey, New York, Delaware, and Washington, D.C. Come on, let's get it. Yeah.
That shit's smooth. It's smooth? Yeah. All right, man. That shit went straight down. <sighs> well, you struggling over there? I'm a grown ass man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the fuck out of here. Hey, next youngin', Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is a wrap. We out. That was good.